We've got the culmination of this creative workflow journey that we've been on this afternoon. And we've seen some examples of, of, of assets that have been produced by Niels and also by Richard. And now it's for the final piece of the jigsaw, if you like, about how we bring that all together to build and publish a website and a digital publication. So these guys have been busy prepping themselves during the interval. No, no uh, drinks for you guys. So um, <laughs> without any further ado, please welcome Iona and Rupert. Hi. So I'm kicking off and I represent the digital agency responsible for the web presence of the magazine. And as such, I have a multidisciplinary team working for me with a range of skills amongst them, including several designers and developers. And what we really need is a task-orientated set of tools that work really well together and are targeted towards those different skill sets. And this is where the edge tools and services really come into their own. What I'm going to show you is an example of a workflow within that scenario. So let's jump into my collaboration folder within the Creative Cloud. Within this folder, I've got some assets shared with me uh, that have come from outside the agency from Niels and from Rich. I've also got this folder automatically syncing to my desktop. So I've got replication of these files. So let's jump into here. I've, saved, I've shared these files also with my team, so they've been able to get on with their workflow and start this build process. But you can see in here I've got my animation images, and I've also got my videos ready to go into the website. I've also set up a folder which I'm going to share with the digital marketing agency that are responsible for the project. And they're going to be working within the Adobe, Mar Adobe Marketing Cloud environment. So let's jump straight away into the wireframe that's come over from the client. And we're looking at this in Photoshop. So there we go. We've seen this earlier. It's populated with some of the images and some placeholders uh, that Rich has produced. And you can see this is going to work really well for an iPad horizontal layout for the design. And we've also decided we're going to use this as our desktop layout as well. But in order for it to display and reflow correctly across different screen sizes and smaller devices, we're going to need to do some adapting. And this is where Edge Reflow steps into play. My designer has already been working on this document, and she's built quite a lot of elements within here. She's chosen to start working from a maximum orientation down to minimum, because that's the starting point for our design. We're going smaller. And changes that are made to these uh, larger screen sizes will be reflected in these smaller screen size breakpoints as we go through. And you can see the breakpoints that she set up for the different screen sizes along here. You'll also notice that this font here is looking different to the one in the Photoshop document. And that's because we're working with an Adobe web font the Edge web fonts, which are integrated within Reflow, so we can access them directly from here. And what this means is this font's going to run really fast from a server. And that means that this is going to display correctly across different devices. It can remain active, searchable, dynamic, and reflow correctly as we change different screen sizes. And it's independent on the, of the device that it's being viewed on. So let's just take a little look at how this navigation element here, for example, resizes as we move through the document. You can see it goes from a left column display up to a horizontal row at the top as we get down to a vertical iPad. And then as we get smaller, it becomes this little call out icon, which will be more appropriate for the phone navigation. So along with the web fonts integration, what's great within Reflow is I've got the ability to work with Adobe Edge Inspect. And you can see here, I've got this up and running, and I've got my iPad and iPhone connected at the moment. I can have multiple devices connected. And what this means is that not only can we preview this document and see how it's working within the Edge Reflow environment itself, we can also, if we switch over to this camera over here to take a look at the iPad, we can see how it's going to look and run without having to build any code or publish this site. So let's switch over to this camera. There we go. 
So as you can see, we've got, as we wanted, the horizontal layout of the navigation. If I scroll down this page a little bit, we've got a two-column layout appearing for some of the blog posts down the bottom here. And that's all looking good to me. And equally, if I switch over now to my iPhone, and let's stay on that camera, that's great. And we can see that we've got, as we wanted, the navigation call out there. And also, as I scroll down, you can see the format changing. We've got a single column layout for a lot of this additional content down the bottom. So I'm happy with the look of that. But it's, of course, really important that I'm getting sign off from my client. And I'm making sure that they're happy with what we're doing throughout this process. And this is where Edge um, Inspect is really great. Because I can click on this little icon here at this point, And I can take a screenshot. I can do the same with my iPad. And if I jump back over into my folder structure over here, into my Edge Inspect screenshots, you can see these have instantaneously uh, synchronized via the cloud. Not only do I have the images that I need of the screenshot and the navigation layout, but I also get a text document that's produced as well, which tells me the device type and also the screen resolution and some details about when it was taken. So from there, I can easily share this screenshot and the iPad one with my client, the iPhone one with my client, and uh, make sure she's happy with the design. And we can get sign off and manage that sign off process through the Creative Cloud. And I would do that jumping over to my Edge Inspect folder. I can select an image here and add a comment to it. For example, are you happy? So I can use this as my uh, sign-off workflow, which is great. OK, I'm just going to jump back into Reflow again. Because once my designers uh, built this and we've got the sign-off and we're happy with how this document's looking, this is where the developer can jump into the document. And I'm just going to select these navigation items here. To make sure I've got them selected correctly, I can actually uh, look through this uh, layers manual man uh, menu just here and select that particular div tag that they're sitting within. And then I can open up the CSS panel, which displays all of the different CSS code that Reflow has generated for all of those different screen breakpoints. And my developer can quickly copy this code using the clipboard icon here and jump into their code editor and paste it into uh, the web build environment. I'm just going to bring up the preview in Chrome as well while I'm doing this. So Adobe Edge Code is a code editor, as it suggests. Uh, and it also it, so it enables you to edit all of the JavaScript and the HTML and the CSS code that you like. And then it also enables you to do some quick edits. You can see I'm just selected on this color of these navigation items that are uh, being displayed in the Chrome browser at the moment. And that means that they're being uh, highlighted for me. So I can very easily see which area of the web page is going to be affected by this element. And if I do a Command-D, e, I can bring up my text editor the color here. And I can change the font to the color that I would like it. Super quick, really nice. The other thing is, because we're looking at this in the Chrome browser, if I had the plugin activated for Edge Inspect, I'd also be able to preview this website on the devices, as we did earlier with the Reflow uh, sync up. So let's take a look at the site. We've got the video added in here already that's come over from Niels. So that's got the nice Cinema 4D uh, elements within it. Uh, we've also, if we scroll down to near the bottom of the page, we've got the video that uh, Rich has produced for us. Let's just play that. There we go. So this is the one that was created in Photoshop, been shared with us earlier. But the thing that's missing so far is the animation that I know is due to sit in this placeholder just here. And my design has already started working on this, uh, along with the developer. So we're just going to jump over into Edge Animate to take a look at the progress of that. So Edge Animate is a timeline, keyframe-based animation program that will enable a designer to create HTML and JavaScript animations without writing code. You saw some elements of it earlier. So you know that if I select uh, this skateboard symbol here, 
I can create symbols which allow, and let's just scroll over to its off screen, there we go, which allow animations to sit with inside other animations. And here I've just, uh, I've got some scrolling through of some colors. This is actually a render that's come out of Cinema 4D. If you can see the uh, logos changing color. I've applied some color filters uh, to the logo within Photoshop and that's what's animating through. So that's gonna cycle through as the element itself, if I just jump back out to the symbol it's sat within. As you can see, it's also got a motion path animation applied to it. And Paul demonstrated that to you earlier. That's a really great new feature. Um, so not only can uh, you add symbols and sit symbols within uh, other animations, you can, of course, add interactivity to elements within the timeline and also to the timeline as a whole. And additionally to that, a developer can step into this environment and add a whole other layer of JavaScript um, interactivity to this document. So let's just take a look at how this is working at the moment. If I jump over to here, you can see I've got some nice rollovers happening on these images that were produced by Rich. And if I click, we'll get a nice trigger for that motion path of the skateboard to come past. So the thing that the developers added is this parallax effect, which is triggered to move forwards as I move the mouse in one direction and back in the other direction. And we've got some depth of field changing there. It's quite nice effect. So I'm very happy with this. I've got lots of pop-ups. I've got some animations with some statistics applied to them. And I need to now make this available to my developer to insert within the rest of the code uh, web build. So let's jump into Edge Animate, and we'll look at how we do that. So I would just browse to my publish settings, uh, choose the web export option, and if I show you the folder structure here, you can see the code that's been produced. So the JavaScript files, the edge includes, and also, of course, the image assets within there as well. And my developer can then drop that within the uh, code within his web build, no problem, very quick. But we also have been commissioned to produce a version that's going to be optimized for the iPad, which will go into the digital publication that Rupert's producing. And because we've got no concept on the iPad of a mouse hover, we've just produced a version that's going to loop nicely. So it's going to play. And then this parallax effect is just going to loop. And in order for us to publish this in a format that Rupert needs, uh, and if we do this, he'll actually be able to place it into his InDesign document, much in the way that you would just an image or a video file, we create something called an animate deployment package, which is this one here. So you can see this is a really nice workflow and streamlined environment for my team to work and collaborate. They can access the assets that they need to. They can share them with each other. And I can effectively manage the delivery of this project. So all that remains for me to do now is to jump into my Creative Cloud environment. And I'm just going to navigate to that DPS animation that I've exported. I'm going to select that. And I'm going to add a comment over to you, Rupert. Oh, Rupert. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Iona. Um, so now we're going to move on to the last stage in our journey. We're going to take all of the great content that Iona and Richard created earlier. And we're going to take that content and build that into an interactive iPad application. Adobe's Creative Cloud includes Adobe's Digital Publishing Suite Single Edition. And this allows you to create highly engaging iPad applications. Once you've created those, you can then submit them to Apple for sale or make them available for free. And one of the great features about this is that a designer who knows InDesign, a designer who's familiar with all of the tools for print production, can use those same skills to be able to create digital publications as well. So we're empowering those designers with the gift of motion and sound to bring really engaging um, applications. So um, as we saw earlier, I have access here to the files that um, Iona and Richard 
shared with me via the Creative Cloud. So we've got those files there. We've also got the, uh, the Typekit desktop fonts synchronized across the team, so we're using consistent branding. Um, so let's switch over, without further ado, and go over to Adobe InDesign CC. Um, and here we've got uh, started working on this layout. Um, and we can see here we have a number of pages within this InDesign document. And I'm going to start placing interactive components. So let's move down to page two here, currently blank. And we're going to put the video in here. So file place. Let's go in and go to the team folder that Richard created. And there is my video file. And that's going to load in. We want to place a nice poster image that will stand there. So we go to the media here, select poster, choose image. And Richard kindly created one for me earlier. Select that and place that in there. And that's that job done. Now we'll scroll down to the next page. And here we want to do a trick profile, a trick analysis here. And I don't even remember earlier, Richard was able to take that video file and break it apart into a series of images, an image sequence. Well, in InDesign, all we need to do is point InDesign at that image sequence. And then we can enable somebody to interact and scrub across um, those images. So let's put a frame in here and just drag that out. We'll go to the Folio Overlays panel here, select Image Sequence, load the images, and we'll simply go to our Creative Cloud Files, select Team. There is the Scrub folder, select Open. And because the files are numbered sequentially, InDesign knows what the order of the files is. And then we can configure our image sequence. And the great thing here is that nearly all the options are in plain English. So one of the nice things about this tool is designers can really quickly pick it up. And I'm always impressed when I go and speak to designers how quickly they can start using this tool and, and creating really impressive uh, publications. So we're going to leave these options. We'll just stop at first and last frame. And we'll leave the defaults on there. OK, let's just reposition that just below our graphic there. And of course, I can use all of the same features I can for print layout. All the typography controls, all of the transparency, all of the text wrapping, all of the layout features I'm familiar with are available for both print and digital publications as well. Now let's go down on, on this page. We're going to take the animation we just saw, the animation created um, in Adobe Edge Animate. And again, this reflects you know, the great interoperab interoperability, oh, that's a long word for this time of day, um, the, the, the great interaction between the various tools. So we can take video, we can take images, we can take edge animation files and then place them um, inside our DPS apps. And here it will work offline as well as online. So we're going to, again, select this frame, file, place, and let's go to the uh, Creative Cloud folder. There we go. There's the animation share. Click Open. And now it's going to load that image, load that HTML, and place it directly on our page. We'll go to Folio Overlays. It's automatically recognized that this is web content. Although we're using Edge Animate, you can, in theory, take any web content and enhance your publications with HTML, HTML5. So we're going to choose Autoplay, which is going to automatically play the uh, HTML here. We can allow user interaction as well. So this can either be static, or we can allow somebody to interact with that content. OK. And now we'll go on to the final page. Here we're going to do, uh, it's uh, talking about Black Pearl Skate Park in the Cayman Islands. So we were talking about um, great skate parks of the world. And what I want to do here is I want to take some web content, live web content, and place that directly in my InDesign page. Um, and we can do that. Obviously, I need to be online for that. If I'm offline, we could have a nice, a nice placeholder with some text saying, please connect to see this. So what we're going to do is move over to Google. And there, on Google Maps, can we see the uh, Black Pearl Skate Park? And if we zoom in, we can even see all the ramps there. Amazing detail. Let's zoom out now. And there's the Cayman Islands. And what we're going to do is just grab that link from Google, drag the iframe, copy that into my clipboard. Now go back to InDesign, select the uh, frame, and do Object Insert HTML. And then I would just paste that in there. 
So you could write arbitrary HTML in there, or I can come in and I can even edit this um, if I knew how to code. Um, but I'm a designer, so I don't need to know how to code. Um, click OK. And it's now going to generate a poster image um, for me. Automatically, it's going to read that HTML, and there, there we go. So let's reposition that next to my arrow there. And again, we'll go to Folio Overlay and tell it to autoplay, so it'll automatically be interactive. OK. So that's it. We've created our interactive um, publications. You can obviously build out lots more pages in that. So the next stage is obviously to preview it. And um, let's just move this out of the way here. And we will go to the free Adobe Content Viewer that allows you to preview your work. And let me just position that there. So can we just go back to the desktop, please? <coughs> Thank you. OK, so we go to the Folio Overlay panel here. And down here is the Preview button. And I've connected my iPad here to my computer. And I can just hit Preview. And we've now got Preview on Rupert's iPad available. Um, so this is a great feature. Nothing beats actually being able to see the publication on the device you're going to publish this on. So this is really important. We do have a desktop viewer. Um, can we switch over to the iPad, please? We do have a desktop viewer as well, um, and that allows you to preview it on the desktop. And of course, we can also share via the cloud. So as you're working on a project, whether it's for your own purposes or for a client, um, we, can, um, we can upload that folio to the cloud and then share that and allow people to see the work in progress. Often these publications are a team effort. Um, multiple people working on it at the same time. And again, by connecting to the cloud, we enable collaborative workflows. You can, of course, work offline. So here we can see our iPad publication has been rendered uh, to my iPad here. And let's just have a quick look. So here's the video. Let's hit play. It's playing beautifully, it's playing natively um, on the app itself. The video that uh, Richard and Neil's kindly created for us. Here's the scrub. So here I just scrub along here. Here we go. And I can move my finger, slow down, and look at that. Tricks so again, really simple to do to be able to create very compelling effects. This can be used for doing 360s, all types of uh, image sequences. Um, for that, we'll come down to the um, edge animate. There's the edge animate we saw. We can now interact with this. Here we go, it starts loading. Um, and finally, we've got our Google map there, and I can even click on that. And here we go, we can actually zoom out. You can see this is live web content here um, directly inside. As far as the user's concerned, it's all seamless. Um, as long as they're connected, it just works fine. So it's about blending the best of the web with content that can also be read offline um, as well. And once we're ready, we then, inside InDesign, we go create application. And there's a wizard that will guide you through the process of creating that app. And then you can submit that um, to Apple. So I'd just like to summarize what we've seen here today. We've obviously seen three creative areas. We've seen the magic of Photoshop that Richard showed you earlier. Um, we've seen the great range of video production tools that Neil showed. Obviously, we've, we've seen a, the, the cutting edge um, web tools, pun intended, um, that, that Iona showed us. But of course, this isn't just about creation, it's about publishing as well. Whether you're publishing to Behance or whether you're publishing to the web or, in this instance, um, a, a, Adobe's digital publishing suite. So Creative Cloud is around you know, the, the, whole, the whole workflow. So um, now it's, it's over to you, it's over to uh, our customers to leverage the power of Creative Cloud and go out there and create great, great things. Thanks very much. <laughs>